Hey everybody, it's Corey with Natural Born Tillers. We're here again at the Delta Corporate Campus. We're at the Edible Campus and we're harvesting one of my favorite and weirdest vegetables, uh, the Belgian endive. The Belgian endive is a zombie vegetable. It's one of the few zombie vegetables that you'll eat and you will see why, but we're basically gonna harvest it today and then uh, we're gonna store it and then we're gonna allow it to grow it again. So it's gonna have a, a, a second growth that we're gonna eat. Now, before we can actually enjoy this Belgian endive, we have to plant it. And a fair amount of planning goes into this, and what I usually like to do is think and plan from the ending backwards. So I love Belgian endive around the holidays, so I'm gonna mark that mid-December uh, about when I wanna harvest. So walking back from there, I know I need to plant um, and have everything in the ground, um, usually sometime in mid-September. So if I can do that, I can harvest in um, November, and then I can force everything and have everything ready. So uh, that's kind of what we've done, and we're going to kind of take you on a journey back in time so you can see um, the process of us planting it and getting it ready for you. So enjoy. All right, it is September 10th, and we're just planting some really pretty transplants from the Oxford College Farm. We got our endive, it's going in, it's the beginning of its journey. It was seeded about six weeks ago. So now it goes in the beds. So we have a beautiful bed here of Belgian endives and you can see they've grown up really nicely. Uh, and it looks like we have something that we can use and harvest, but actually we're gonna not use any of these leaves. They're super bitter if you try them. They're extremely, if you've ever had dandelion leaves, you can eat them, don't recommend it. But if you'd like to, you can. But what we're here for are these roots. And so it doesn't look like anything particularly interesting. But what we do is we knock off some of the excess growth. We try to get as much of the stuff off as possible. We don't want to necessarily damage the roots too much. And then we're going to just cut right at the top. And this is what we are going to save. So we have our uh, preserved chicons. You can actually put these in the refrigerator for months and months until this all turns brown, but you want to at least simulate some vernalization. So you want to simulate winter for these plants. So we've had them in the uh, refrigerator for about two weeks, and that's the minimum time you want to kind of trigger this process that's going to produce the endive. So what we're going to talk about today is how to do the next process, the bringing this, uh, this plant back from the dead to make it a zombie vegetable. So we're going to be using these. We're going to plant them in a tub. We're going to keep them in complete darkness. We're going to use this pole, uh, this PVC pipe that is, with some holes drilled into it to make sure that the soil stays moist and some potting soil. You can really use any medium at all. You can use sand. Uh, but the idea is we're going to plant these really close together and then we're going to cover them and we're going to keep them in complete darkness uh, for about three weeks. And then we should have some really tasty results. So let's see what that looks like. So all we're going to do is we're going to pop these in here as close as possible. Kind of dig out a little hole for them. And it isn't like you're planting something in your garden where you have to have it with adequate space. These are going right up against each other. So now we're just gonna fill up this pipe and the gravity will allow the water to be dispersed evenly. All right, so now we have our endive. They've been planted, they've been watered, and now lights go out. So again, we're going to keep this covered and we have just this simple, it's pretty, um, it's keeping a lot of the light out. I'm going to actually do another layer, but you want to have anything. It can be the top of a tub, it can be a blanket, it can be a sheet, but you want to keep the, the whole thing dark, no peeking for three weeks. So we're going to come back here in three weeks and we'll see what it looks like. 
All right, everybody, it's been about three weeks since we uh, were last here, and then, so I've kept these covered. Um, I've kept my kids and my dogs away from them. I haven't even checked on them myself, so I'm really excited. This is kind of a grand reveal, so let's see how our end dives look. All right, and they look really good. So these things have grown without any light for the past three weeks, and so you kind of keep them closed, covered as much as possible, and you can see we've got some really nice tight heads. So that's kind of what we wanted. So next step is we're going to harvest. Uh, and you got to kind of get your knife in there, but you want to cut somewhat below the, the, or somewhat above the line of growth, because these will actually keep growing. So, and all of these leaves are good to eat as well, like all the loose leaves. You know, you find the, the tight heads in the grocery store, but these are perfectly fine to eat. All right, this is my favorite part of the job. I know some chefs. So instead of cooking this ourselves, we're going to go to one of my favorite chefs. We're here at the door of Deer and Dove in Decatur, Georgia, and we're going to have Chef Terry Koval make some magic out of our harvest. So. Come on. Hey Terry, how's it going? Oh, hey Corey, how are you doing today? Pretty good. What do we got here? We got some Belgian endives. Oh wow, look how cool these are. So they've been growing in my basement for three weeks and I figured if anyone knew what to do with them, it would probably be you, so. Well, they look amazing, look at these things. It's so, incredible. So wow. with, with like endives and radicchio, what do you usually do with these? Well, with the bitterness, we need something a little bit to kind of counteract with that. Mm -hmm. Something with a lot of acid, you know, a lot of punch, and maybe a little uh, fire, maybe. Okay. Some, uh, you want to catch something on fire? Yeah. Maybe we um, char these things up a little bit. Um, these satsumas look really great. You got here a Meyer lemon? Meyer lemon, yep. I grew these in trees outside my house, so I figured I'd awesome. topple them with something. I'd say we char this up, too. Okay. Make it over the fire. Um, give it a little burnt flavor there, kind of counteract with the bitterness. This is great. This is really crispy. It's amazing. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks, Corey. All right. Let's do it. All right. Let's see what we got here. Wow, these are beautiful, huh? All right. So walk us through it, Terry. What are we doing? All right. So we got this Meyer lemon that looks amazing. So we're going to cut this thing in half. We're going to go ahead and try this thing on the, on the grill. Great. All right, now we're gonna prepare these uh, beautiful endives here. It's great, huh? That looks delicious. All right, so we wanna kind of tame our fire a little bit because you do want to cook with more of the embers than you do the the actual flame. just develop a sense of timing for this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, probably like two minutes. You know, you just want a light char on there. Perfect, yeah, we got some nice caramelization on there. And let's make a uh, mustard vinaigrette to kind of counterbalance that bitterness. Um, we're gonna start off a little first with some uh, sorghum. So what is it probably do? About two tablespoons, two, three tablespoons. Um, and then to, that's gonna help with the emulsification of the, the vinaigrette as well. So you got whole grain mustard, to about two tablespoons of that. And then we have some shallots here that I chopped up. Probably let's do about two tablespoons of that. And then we have our olive oil. Start drizzling in your olive oil. Let's get it kind of get this emulsification going here. You know, we're gonna add a little uh, vinegar to this to kind of give it a, a little acid as well. Uh, today we're gonna use a little pawpaw vinegar, which is pretty incredible. 
Nice. <laughs> Alright, so we have uh, these end eyes that we're going to lay down here. And then we have our mustard vinaigrette with pawpaw vinegar. I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. See that emul emulsification? some uh, decimal place farm pure cheese that we're gonna put on here. Some walnuts. Now these walnuts we just toss in olive oil heavily on the on the sea salt and then slowly roasted them in our hearth. Oh they're so crisp you can hear it. I mean how crispy these are. <laughs> it's incredible, right? Beautiful. They were harvested literally minutes ago, so. <laughs> yeah, these are these are great. So we have a couple more things to add for acid. You know, we brought these beautiful satsumas here. These look great, right? So we got some citrus there and this amazing Meyer, Meyer lemon here. So we're gonna kind of uh, see when you char them like that kind of like releases a lot of that in there. Yeah. Well, how's that for studies? Studies. Where are we going for it? I think we're going in for it. Uh, yeah. Terry, thank you so much for putting this together for us and hopefully people at home will be able to try out this recipe. If not, they just have to come into your restaurant <laughs> and try it for themselves. So. Awesome, yeah, let's give it a Give it a little bite here. This being the holidays, it's uh, it's really fun to come in and see what you do, but uh, really thankful for chefs like you that are all about trying new things and you know going with what's in season and enjoying good food. So yeah, get that char from yeah, have fire. that burnt, sweet, bitter, only good things. Yeah, this is special. I really don't like planning. A lot of times I would put together an intricate plan and then have to burn it down at a moment's notice and then all that time is wasted. But what I have noticed is even if I don't end up using the plan that I've spent all this time on, things tend to work out when I do plan. So when your plans go haywire, just remember that you're much better off uh, than if you wouldn't have put together a plan at all. So I hope you enjoyed the video this month. Plant a seed, watch it grow, share the harvest. Take care and eat well.